We all hate social media, right? <laughs> it feels like a never ending job. And especially if you are not naturally inclined to doing social media, it can almost well, not even almost, it feels like a drag, right? <laughs> but the problem is in the world that we live in, we need it for our homestead businesses. And if I'm fully honest, I don't want to do it. And probably you don't either. So now that we have made this connection point, I want to talk to you for a minute about what to do if you are feeling like you really want to get off social media, but you can admit that that's what you need to do to grow your homestead business or your backyard farm side hustle, but you just don't know how to get yourself motivated or keep yourself focused in on it, or you're seriously looking for an excuse to get off of it, but there's some things you need to consider or be aware of before you do it. I think the first thing you need to be okay with is admitting that you don't love it because that's okay. We are in a world where everyone seems to think that you're supposed to love doing social media, or it's supposed to be the core focus of your business. And I'm gonna be the first to tell you that it does not have to be the core focus of how you get customers or how you um, build your business online. But as I will get to later, it is going to have to be the place that you get started. So with that said in mind, we're gonna go through a lot of the problems and then see if we can kind of work out some of the benefits of it as well. So the time suck problem. <laughs> this can come and show up in a lot of ways. And some of it can be simply because you do not have a clear written strategy in front of your face and you kind of try too many different things and you can't just go post the, the, the content that's, that fits your strategy and then be done. This is where I struggle too, where I'm, I could be considered a workaholic if I don't force myself to let go and if I didn't also have the set boundary of when my husband gets home from work, it's off, right? First, come up with your boundaries of time restrictions. Like what time do you have that you can give social media? But also not just social as a whole, but what are you trying to do in the big picture of your homestead business? And what are your key platforms? And where does your time get allocated? So I held up the sheet. Um, before and I understand it's I don't believe it's readable possibly it may or may not be but it's literally a list of most important to the least important of all the platforms that I produce content on and the amount or the minimum amount that I want to post each week and then there is also the type of content that I put there the um, content strategy so in other words like what types of content am I posting and why, but then also the monetization strategy for that platform or what's the main goal of it. So is it to get a bit, get people on my email list or is it to actually sell something directly on that platform? So having this paper right in front of my face and it has to stay very much not hidden under a sheet of, you know, um, planner papers or things like that. It needs to stay as close to the top of mind as possible so that I can always look back to it when I catch myself slipping and go, er, nope, this is your focus. The other thing that can be a huge problem with social for people is there is a lot of negative on it. There is a lot of um, people will not love you <laughs> about things that you stand for or things that you agree with or, or post or people just sometimes are just nasty. Um, and that's just going to be a fact of life, unfortunately. Um, even the, the best place, it's not really a good thing, but the main place where I get a lot of nasty comments is on Pinterest, believe it or not. Um, and people don't always agree with certain ways that I do raise the rabbits and that's okay. They don't have to. Um, but it's also understanding how are you going to respond to that? So you early on, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to either shut it off or just ignore it and not even respond, which that's okay too. You don't have to respond to it. However, I do think responding, especially if you can do it in a clear written out manner in a matter of fact way, instead of just coming back into the fight, <laughs> um, can really help show your authority and your confidence in your reasons for doing what you do, whether it's how you raise a garden how you raise a certain type of animal, whatever. It really doesn't matter. But if someone disagrees with you and you can have good reasons for why, 
that's going to raise your your authority level in the eyes of the people who do trust you and who do follow you. Maybe you're still like, yes, all of these things get in my nerves and I don't want to be social, which is me. Honestly, I keep saying this, but it's true. I don't want to be a social person. I would be completely happy only writing blog posts and just letting it go at that. But that's not the stage that I'm in. I have kind of got myself not on purpose into something I don't want to be in, but I've gotten myself into a larger business that it, this is what it's required of me. And if I want to reach these certain income goals or certain levels or certain impact goals, this is what I've got to do. <laughs> and so it's a take it or leave it thing. It's not, it's, it's unfortunately not a have your cake and eat it too kind of situation. If you are still like, I want off of social media, then you have to ask yourself this question. If you got rid of that platform today, would you be okay with the results of getting rid of it? So the my Facebook page would be a bigger impact to me than deleting Instagram, if I'm being completely honest. So what am I going to, if I, let's look at that for example's sake. My main goal with the rabbit or the Facebook page is to be communication platform for the rabbits, for the French slaps that I raised. And while it is still branded under my whole business name and just me essentially, um, I do share a little bit about, you know, business and, and homestead business, that sort of thing. But the main goal is giving me a second way to keep a larger group of people updated on what's going on in the rabbitry, but then also how I can communicate with people. And a lot of people do find me as a buyer through Facebook still. So it, it, it could impact the amount of deposits and things like that. Um, and, but that would again, force me to only communicate through email, or I would have to choose to allow my phone number to be a contact option. And that's just not something I'm willing to do yet. Um, even though I have a dual number system that kind of protects my private number, but also gives me a number contact option. So maybe that's going to be something in the future. Um, but right now the system works. And so it's like, why am I going to mess that up? Right? So if I, if I did decide to delete Facebook, I would have to find the option as an alternative or find another way to communicate with those people in, in bulk essentially, because people are just, people are on social, whether we want to be or not. Now, if I chose, if there's a platform that you're like, it really doesn't give that much validity to my business yet or that you see you need to think about your future goals of how you plan to make income so you can go full hog and just be a, a, a website if you want to be um but you are also looking at bigger brands if you want to if you want to get brand deals or have people pay you to post about content having a blog is okay but they're not likely to do that as much it, you, you having a social following is going to be the more likely way for you to get brand deals. Um, and so like it or not, like if that's an income stream you want to do or some other one you think will benefit from that, um, you need to consider that as well. Why is social media valuable? This is kind of the fess up and admit it. <laughs> um, tie, uh, not, not time, but it's time to acknowledge that yes, social media can be valuable in some respects. Social media can be used for brand awareness and building a connection, which is the main reason a lot of brands are doing it. And I, when I say brands, I mean even myself. Like, I am a brand <laughs> putting it out there, you know, in the world, right? People don't come to me personally. It, it is who I am and, and people associate it with me. So anything that you put out there, you, even if it's just your name or your family farm, that's considered a brand. That's what people know you as, so, which seems kind of pointless a little bit. And it's almost an unmeasurable thing. However, that is how one of the best ways you're going to stay top of mind. And when people are ready to buy what you offer, then they will go to your website or to what you offer or go Google you. But until then, it's almost an unmeasurable it's almost an immeasurable factor or an immeasurable um, indicator, performance indicator. That was the word I was looking for. Um, and so 
it can that that main thing can almost feel pointless but if you are still getting engagement your reach is, is still pretty decent um, and you are getting people following you on a regular basis even if it's not a lot it's still it shows that what you're doing is resonating social is decent for generating leads and gaining visibility now this kind of ties back into the last point a little bit but like my rabbit tree page is more the lead generator for me when it comes to rabbit sales but i still and it's it's not my number one but it's still it's still a good lead generator because that's that that content that cute rabbit content is what people engage with and it gets pushed out but also like if maybe you don't sell livestock it still is going to be the way that people find you okay um especially in the short term i'm gonna get to that increasing visibility is something that you just again it goes back to the top of mind thing keeping more eyeballs people need to know you exist before they're going to learn to trust you and buy from you now this is a big one and why i am keeping instagram for now um is it helps you gain insights to your audience and so while having a website and even an email list is is great and really that's going to be a big money maker if you follow it in a certain pathway or um if your blog and your website is your main your main home for your business but it still is not a good way to get answers for the questions you have for your audience people just don't respond to a blog comment or an email nearly as well it just just doesn't work but on social i often take my emails and put them on social and it tends to be about a month after they've gone out as an email but it it it's still those emails get or those sent emails get a much um, higher engagement response on social because people can just tap it or sometimes they're just more inclined to leave a comment on social and so that's where it can be a really good way to get more more um, instantaneous results to the questions you have and making sure that your business is going in the right direction and even if it's something as simple as marketing or the um not branding necessarily but something that they care about or asking them a question whether it's in stories or actually on your feed posts things like that it's really it's really the best way to get a quick answer for things that you're looking for especially when you have an audience even if it's just a small one now, I want to talk to you a minute about having a short-term strategy and a long-term strategy. So social is like, again, it's that short-term, quicker response kind of thing, but it's definitely not the way that you want to build your business in the long term. And so that's where I'm constantly referencing having a blog and a website. And I, when I say blog, I don't mean as a um, influencer type thing. I mean like finding keywords that you can target it's your website it's one of the best places that you're going to be able to own the content and you're not reliant on feeding the beast constantly okay <laughs> so that's that's the style when i say blog that's what i mean but the the short term like i've said is 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 going to be the way that you're going to get customers quicker because that was how i got my rabbit tree sales early on quickly because ranking in Google, if you only did your website, if you relied on ranking in Google and that was it, you're looking at traffic a year from now, probably. So you can't rely on, especially raising and selling livestock or, um, garden animals, not <laughs> garden animals. You can't rely on making sales quickly or in the beginning, just through Google. You also need that short term audience. So what are some things you can do in order to help you stick with it if you're like I, I, I see the need but I don't I don't want to do it right go back to this create your paper this is just typed up I didn't get a template or anything create a sheet of paper of your platforms and why you're doing it have your main goal for the platform your monetization strategy so like how are you getting money or how could this platform lead to money and then your content strategy, meaning like what you're posting and why. So how, what content are you using to get just just get eyeballs to your account? But then how are you actually telling them about your business as well? So have that listed out so you can understand that gives you that why when you're like, why the heck am I doing this? When you feel like you're doubting again, <laughs> you're able to go, 
this is why, okay? Set either a certain day that you create all the content to go out on social and schedule it and just let it go. That typically is what I tend to do for those platforms or have a um, monthly printable calendar type thing where you mark each day that you did post and what you were planning to post. Um, and so maybe you need to find a social media scheduler that you can use, but doing what you need to do to limit your restrictions or limit the friction to posting is what's going to help you do it. Batch creating the content, even if it's just partially, it's going to get you a lot further than going, okay, what do I post today? That sort of thing. Having a plan of what you're going to post as far as topic categories or the general point that you want to make is also going to be a big help. Some of them are like behind the scenes about me, essentially letting people have an insight into you. Um, some of them are tips, some of them are um, benefits of your business. So that helps you remember, hey, let's not forget, we need to remind people of the stuff that we offer, that sort of thing, right? Um, if you are a homesteader, of, of your, that's how you're making money, which is what I recommend you do, um, is, you know, talk about your behind the scenes could be about your animals. You could do care tips. You could um, do your personal thought. Like if you have a certain reason you do a raising strategy, like whether, like for me, I don't, I, my rabbits are on wire. Um, I don't do hay, sort of things like that. And I've got good reasons for backing them up. So how do I share that with people? Those are the things that'll help me stand out. And last but not least, sometimes you just got to buckle down and do what you don't want to do. And if you struggle with that, I totally understand. Like I don't want to do it, but I want the business. And so you have to talk to yourself and be like, these are the options. So what are we going to do? Do you understand that? So maybe you just need to give yourself a loving kick in the pants and be like, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> so finding your reason why you're going to do it, setting yourself up and getting it done in a batch and not having to be one off all the time. And then just sitting down and doing it. All right.